Welcome to Wars Podcast. This is Hijian, your host, and this is episode four The Disciples' Wealth. It's a beautiful day today. It's a little chilly, but it's a great day. Well, today we're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna do the podcast outside, walking around, and we're gonna be talking about God on the streets. What we think about the 12 disciples and we think about them following Jesus for three years we have this stigma a stereotype that we have set within ourselves thinking that they are from a poor background they're not the establishment they're not wealthy they come from meager backgrounds now the thing is, the Bible gives us clues and hints to their well-being, their livelihoods, and their wealth. First off, in Matthew, when you read in Matthew, when Jesus calls Peter and his brother, and John and his brother, the Bible is very specific in what they were doing. They were fishermen. They were on a boat when Jesus said I'll make you fishers of men and they left everything they left everything and followed Jesus <clears throat> now our stereotype is compounded by the fact that Jesus during the three-year tenure reached out to the poor the needy the weak the lame the sick and the sinners so because of that we have this stigma that says maybe the disciples were of the same stock first of all they had a job but more importantly if you go look in Luke the same in the same setting Luke gives a specific detail about the ownership of the boat it says the boat belonged to Simon that is Peter so not only did Peter have a job he had his own boat he owned a boat So what would owning a boat mean in today's terms? Well, to make it simple, it means that you own the building space in which you are conducting your business. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to be obliged to keep on paying a certain fee even though your business is not doing too well. So when Peter, left his family his business one thing he could have done is he could have rent his boat out to somebody else and still reap the rewards from his boat it's not a total loss when he left his everything and followed Jesus for three years more significantly if you look in Mark the description of that same scenario has a little bit more addition to it. It says, when John and his brother left Zebedee on the boat, they left their workmen there also. Meaning, they had hired people to work on the boat. So now if you're thinking that the boats that Peter owned, the boat that John and his brother own are small boats where you go out on a fishing trip over the weekend it's nothing like that because for John there was his father himself his brother and at least one worker meaning four people probably five or six to in total who worked on the boat all at the same time that means that means Wait a minute. Evia coffee. I need my dose of caffeine today. Here we go. Now, 
if you think about it, the owner here probably rents this place out at about a thousand to two thousand, maybe even three thousand dollars a month. Think about how many cups of coffee he or she has to sell to cover that cost. In the first place, before even thinking about the wages, the cost of each item sold, Peter and his friends, John, did not even have to think about this because they already own the boat. And more importantly, if they're not on the boat, they could rent the place out. Like they could rent this place out and just reap a thousand to two thousand, maybe three thousand dollars a month for the usage of the space. That's what they could have done. And I bet that's what Peter had done when he followed Jesus. Well, here's my dose of caffeine for today. Now back to John. Now what would his father have done after his son left? He would have just hired two more people and the business would have continued. There was no loss. Well, financially, instead of paying his sons, now he has to pay the workers. But in, in essence, the business did not suffer from the two boys leaving with Jesus. Nor would have Peter's family felt the same loss. Because in John, when you look at how Peter first met Jesus, it was through his brother Andrew. Now the funny thing is, Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. Now, again, transferring that situation into today's terms, it would mean that Andrew was attending university. It is very uncommon. It is amazing how this family allowed for a grown son to go out and pursue his dreams. Because everybody had to work. Everybody had to work in order for a family to survive. But during that time, the situation in Peter's family was good enough that they could allow Andrew to go out and do whatever he wanted. On the same note, Peter left the family also. But apparently, they did not have to sell the boat in order for the family to survive. Because at the end of John, when Jesus was crucified and he was resurrected, a lot of the disciples went to Galilee. And while they were there, Peter said, I am going to go fish. And guess what? I don't think he went, got on somebody else's boat and went fishing. He probably went back on his own boat to go fish. Let's talk about Matthew. The funny thing about Matthew is he's a tax collector. And we all know a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus because it was my first episode. Well, most of the tax collectors were very rich because they were cheating out the public by setting a tax rate that is more severe than what the actual rate should have been. Now, when Matthew, when Jesus called Matthew, Jesus says, come follow me, and Matthew came and followed him. Now, after following Jesus, he invited the whole lot to his house and held a great banquet for everybody. Now, would a poor person be able to host a massive banquet? I think not. So, why is this significant? Why am I saying this? Why am I making a video about this? Because you need to have the context of the situation in order to understand some of the things that Jesus is saying to the disciples. For one example, when a young rich man came to see Jesus about how he could enter the kingdom of God, after the conversation, Jesus said, you have to go sell your possessions and give the money away and then come follow me. Right? And then after the young man left, Jesus said to the disciples, it is harder for a rich man to go to heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now to this, 
Peter's reply was, Lord, I have left everything to follow you. Now, did he? Did he? Did he sell his boat? Did his family suffer immensely because of his absence? What did he give up? He just put everything on hold in a situation where he could just come back if the revolution that he thought that Jesus was going to stir up did not work out. He had a fallback plan. So these type of context have to be in the back of our minds for us to understand some of the things that we're going to be discussing. So hope you guys enjoyed a little tidbit of information that I, I shared today and I hope it helps you to understand the scripture better. Thank you and see you guys on the next episode. Bye bye.